Hey, good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. And good night. Hello. Hi. And welcome to the big show, everyone. Uh, yours truly, Peter Rosenberg, Cypher Sounds, our producer, Billy G. Billy. Billy, I wanted to talk to you about something. Billy. <laughs> Where are you, Billy? <laughs> you know, Billy has been, like, intentionally clearly trying to work hard and like make the clips better and like is clearly making an effort to try to do a better job yeah and still at least as of this moment appears to have for like the second or third time in the last four or five weeks slept through the show and also do you have to say is that there's a obviously a group chat text a text chain and Billy last night, hey, what time are we recording? What's going on? No, he was the one on top of it. Making, oh, we good for tomorrow? What's the plan? <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> so, fortunately. So, that I'll sit there for like 10 minutes and nothing is happening. And then I'm like, wait a second. I'm definitely awake and sitting here. And Syph is definitely awake and sitting there. What are we doing? <laughs> we should start the podcast. So, um, big shout out to everyone who uh, enjoyed last week. I, 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 I went inside the Patreon, the behind the, the scenes site to see what's going on in that account. I just wanted to like look at what's going on. There are like a hundred and some patrons that are signed up for free, which gets them nothing. I don't know why they're there, but like it's just an annoying thing that sort of inflates the number a bit, but they're not, act they get nothing. They get nothing from the Patreon. And then, of course, we have different pay tiers that get you the same thing. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's not supposed to be that. No. It's supposed to be one. We decide one tier, right? One, it one should, price. It should be one tier. So Wait, there's, wait there's, what would you say? There's, I thought you were talking about Discord. I'm sorry, Patreon. There's 100 that get what for free? Nothing. They're just signed up. It's just they're free members, but there's not. there's no... They don't get access to any of the things that Patreon oh, gives. Oh, I see. Okay, I got it, got it, got it. So I don't know what the purpose of it is. So I, I do. I would love to get everything organized in there. I'm working on it. But at the same time, regardless of which tier you're on, uh, we appreciate that you're enjoying all the bonus episodes. And if for some reason you only listen to our free episodes, while we appreciate you, we like you slightly less than those who are forking over the cash to get that extra one <laughs> Eparu every week. You know what I mean? They get to hear the real, the inside, the inside, whatever. They talk turkey. What's happening in here? I saw it, Saif. I saw you. No, I, like, I like the location you have of that delightful monster energy beverage. Um, I saw you and your anti cancelers were reveling this weekend. The big Shane Gillis, SNL. Yeah, oh, I, didn't, I still haven't. I still didn't get to see it. I saw some of the sketches. I didn't see the monologue, but yeah, I was uh, posted for my brother Shane. Everyone was happy for Shane Gillis. Yeah, he's uh, the, a great monologue, guy. the monologue was interesting. It's like um, I see there's some controversy because some people say he bombed and some people say he didn't bomb, and it's very it's a very unique monologue that is for sure his energy in it is that does he have a sort of intentionally awkward energy a lot or was he deaf you think he yeah yeah it's like a style that it, I, would say, I wouldn't use the word awkward but it's definitely like he always seems like he's working it out right there yes okay yeah. yes so that's, yeah, so, that's his style. And, and does he hold the mic like a little kid holding a drink yes that's how he always holds the mic so all of that what I was thinking, I was like, yeah, this is a little different, but I don't know what his style is, so I can't say what this is exactly. He's um, a very funny comedian. What are you? I, I don't, don't know. know. I don't know what. I don't what know where that. What category or what style? He goes on stage. Yeah. He grabs a microphone and then he tells jokes. Yeah, but it's but it's, you're 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 oversimplifying it because the truth is people. Okay, for example, one um I always loved Stephen Wright, right? Yeah. But if you never watched Stephen Wright and he showed up at Sife's at your old show at uh on 14th Street, yeah. It would have taken people a while, if at all, to where they would have been I get what this guy's doing. That's that whether they get it or not is not take away from what he's doing. He's going on stage, grabbing a mic, 
telling jokes. Right, but no, no. Do you think he has a different intention? No, 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 but in terms of the audience then saying whether they think it's funny or not, you might not think it's funny. You might go, I don't get it. I don't. That's what any person who goes on stage and tells jokes. What do you think? There's like, you think there's like a regular batch of comedians that everyone says is funny and then there's this strange batch? I go on stage and tell jokes and some people don't get me. I'm not trying to do a different style. If you didn't notice it, there was this whole like back and forth online and it ends up being a political conversation because the anti-cancelers, the ones who are super like everyone's getting canceled. I had people literally tweet to me like they were rubbing it in my face that Shane Gillis was on SNL as if that would bother me. I would be upset like as a progressive person, people sent me the Shane Gillis monologue. Like, look, fuck you, man. Shane Gillis is on SNL. And I'm like, I, I, why would you think? Yeah, I but wouldn't? even he wouldn't do that, though. No, not at all. No, no, no. He's ended up being a representation for people that he did not set out to be, I'm sure, well, representation for. No, Shane He's, Gillis. Well, let me tell you about Shane Gillis. He's a comedian that goes on stage. Go ahead. Tells jokes. So, now. Keep going. That being said, people have made him some kind of martyr uh, poster boy those people give him money to go on stage and tell jokes and he <laughs> goes hey thanks I'll take that money <laughs> no way is he Pennsylvania regular guy which might fall into some Trumpiness yes is he a hardcore conservative Trump supporter? No. Right. He definitely did a skit making fun of Trump, for sure. He, his Trump impressions are great. Right. It Would he vote for Trump over Biden? I think so. But you're not sure even. I'm not even sure. Right. I think so. so. His dad would, for sure. But he makes fun of his dad. Yes. But right. he also loves his dad. Right. So you're saying he's not one specific political thing. He's a guy. I, I've i had nothing but great times hanging out with Shane Gillis. Nothing but. Always. So, so yeah, so there were people out there who were, like, literally throwing it in the face of people like me as if I would be upset that Shane Gillis was hosting SNL. So I went, I was like, oh, I forgot that's the night. So I went and watched it. Yeah. I will Wait, say this about I just want to say one more thing before you get into SNL. Shane is a hip hop head. He could sit here and rap hip hop with us all day. God, that that does make the political part always interesting to me. It's always an interesting conversation. All all day, bro. He he I'm sure he all like <laughs> when we were on tour with Burt Kreischer, he definitely drove. You, you on tour with Burt Kreischer? I was in the summer last summer. Wow. Shane was on some of those. He definitely was yelling out drunk play Freebird, which he's doing a bit. But he's doing a bit, right? He's making fun but, of white people. But I saw him at the Run the Jewels concert, and I didn't get him tickets. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. He was in the same backstage area I was in. Right. So, so man, I'm sorry. So, so SNL. No, no. So, so his SNL monologue was, I thought, really interesting. Remove him specifically from it, right? Like yeah. his whole story that... He was on SNL. They found some wild shit that he said on a podcast back in the day. It was at a time when people were very aggressive about that stuff. It was actually the beginning. Right. The It was the start of it, right? It was like and he got caught up right in the beginning of what we're calling, I guess, the Me Too cancel. Slash cancel culture, culture moment. Yeah. So, and, and by the way, he was one of those casualties. See, these conversations are so deep that, like, to the people who are, like, screaming about it, see... They don't get it. Like, we have to understand, when places were getting sensitive and scared of getting in trouble, they weren't going to take a risk for someone who had literally, they just hired, who was nobody to them. Hank, you're gone. That's it. There's not like, it's not as if he was some successful part of SNL and they were like, yo, we got to let you go. They probably didn't even hesitate that long. No, they, no, no, no. They had, Lauren Michael loved Shane Gillis. So he, did hesitate. Have, so he did hesitate because he thought he was that talented. And, and, and Okay, I know some inside stuff. I'll tell Please. you. I love it. Lauren Michaels was looking for that kind of guy. 
this here's something missing from SNL. Regular American guy, maybe like probably par- definitely parents lean conservative, maybe has some conservative views, but also liberal, like uh, just a regular guy, not like hard left or hard, hard right. right. Right, a right. Guy, a middle a America, a white guy from Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania obviously is a weird political state where all the candidates always got to focus on. It's the state that Trump didn't win but should have won. Right, all that shit. Right. Lauren Michaels was. He's like, damn. We need everything. Kind of leans a certain way on the show. We need like a another voice to make this variety show more variety. <laughs> right. Get Shane Gillis, sees him at JFL. Just uh, for Laughs Comedy Festival. Just for Laughs Comedy Festival. Boom, boom, boom. They figure it out. They they give him an audition. He does, he goes, his audition was standing on stage, telling jokes. Okay. Uh, he gets it, and then all shit fucking <laughs> go breaks, goes haywire. Lorne Michaels fought for him as long as he could. I, I, mm, you always say, like, I'm always, like, anti-woke, whatever, you you know, whatever you call me sometimes. Mm-hmm. The, the woke at that moment in time mm-hmm. actually beat Lorne Michaels, who's one of the most powerful TV and entertainment guys in our lifetime. Mm-hmm. And it, it, got, it got him. And... I think from what the little pieces that I hear from Michael Che, Shane Gillis, Rosebud, people that I know at SNL, like, he regretted it. He regretted it. Lorne Michaels regretted that he let the... The moment. The like masses... The sort of public moment. Push, push him down. He regrets and, it. And, by and the he's way, still I, cool with Shane. I, I, evidently so. Yeah. Um, but, like, I, and by the way, you know progressive as i am and i certainly am i do think there's room if lauren michaels had said hey we're gonna have this guy on the show oh hey this clip came out we don't like that he said this you know guy says statement like yeah that joke was not that's not what i'm about blah 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 and you could have tried to move on but at that time people felt such i guess immense fear but it was internal oh he got pushed internally he's dealing with an internal thing okay so anyways all that stuff is 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 happening. And he ends up then playing this. Now he represents something to people because now he's been so successful on his own as a comic, in part because people supported him after that. It was a factor, right? It increased his popularity, no? Yes. Yes. So, so then when he gets on stage for this monologue, it was a really interesting experiment to me because remove all the things we just said, even though he did include that in the monologue, and it was funny. He said, I worked here once for a second. I was fired. Please don't Google it, yeah. which I thought was very funny. Um, but beyond the specifics of Shane Gillis, what I thought was interesting was for, for the me. the monologue? Yes, in for the, the monologue. monologue. Okay, yes was just to listen to his jokes that were not incredibly PC. I'm framing it that way because the truth is he did not make jokes that were offensive to me by nature. Like, I'm not a sensitive type. Yeah. I'm a big liberal. I'm a big anti-racism, anti-being mean to groups type. But I'm not sensitive to all jokes that are made that include groups yeah so i i found it interesting to myself yeah, didn't do that what are you saying he no so he did make jokes about groups yes right and he even pointed out he's like i'm sorry i literally have like no jokes that are good for tv right thank yeah. you man he literally said that and i'm thinking to myself i felt myself because of where the culture has gone And you know I'm not the biggest believer in, quote, cancel culture, that it's a real serious thing. But we have changed. And I I realized that in the moment because I felt myself tensing up to jokes that I'm like, I I, I got no issue with this joke. This is funny. This is a funny joke. He is is not like 
harping on one thing and trying to be nasty. He's literally just being funny and talking about different cultural groups. And yeah. I thought it was a really interesting experiment to feel myself. What, what do you mean? Uh, the experiment I, to who? Who did the experiment? It was. Well, it kind of was an experiment because SNL was saying like, hey, we're going to allow in 2024, we're going to have a white comic get on stage and just kind of make jokes about everybody. That hasn't really been done that often on free TV in this era. Louis C.K., any stand-up that does SNL does that. Does Louis C.K. still do SNL? I'm saying when he did. I mean, guess what that was before this? Yeah, but... This isn't, I'm telling you, listen, I'm not saying they did it as an experiment. I'm saying for me, I just noticed in myself, wow, I have, I have sort of changed and then I'm getting tightened up about something that I was watching. I'm like, but I find this funny. Why am I getting tightened up by it? Man, this is okay. This is very deep today. I don't know where we're going. All that, all, but all of that coincides with my strong opinions about following the masses. And doing what the fucking proverbial man tells you to do. Right. Fo- celebrating holidays. Yes. Uh, uh, going, you know, following political views or uh, picking a side. It's a comedy show <laughs> where they do comedy. You don't look for at comedy shows to fuel or fucking push your political narrative or agenda. Jokes are taking something that we all know and saying something different about it that's a bit shocking to make your body go. (laughs) (laughs) So in the comedy world, it's a a thing in stand-up comedy. Something's happening lately where they're just letting stand-up comedians host SNL. Shane Gillis is not promoting a movie. He's not on a new TV show. He's not, has, he doesn't have a book out. He's just he's not hot. Running for anything. He's a comedian that, yes, him personally had something going on at SNL. And this is kind of like a, I don't know, who knows? I mean, the same thing happened with Norm MacDonald. Same thing happened when people have beef with SNL. Or they were used to be on SNL, and then they host SNL. Will Farrell, whoever. Right. But in the comedy world, where everyone's like, oh, shit, comedy's so big right now. You can literally just go on nationwide TV and do a set. It's almost like a little mini 12-minute special. Mm-hmm. And then, and then you go play the SNL game, which is being in sketches or being on Weekend Update or whatever it is. But in the first 12 minutes, you get to just run your, a little mini special, a little uh, uh, a same thing you would do on Jimmy Fallon, but instead of four minutes, you get 10 minutes or maybe even 12 minutes. Right. So every, I mean, all this, the media is just looking for a story. They just want a story. Nate Bargetsy hosted SNL. He didn't have nothing out. Except he's a clean, almost Christian comic. Almost. His Nate Bargetsy's a clean comic. Well, so I'm glad you're pointing this out, though, because I the one thought I did have, regardless of, because I thought the sketches were actually pretty damn good on Saturday. Um, but I did think, I was like, yo, has SNL, like, ran out of stars? Has, has Hollywood out of stars? No, I think they see that stand-up comedy is huge right now where a stand-up comedian can fill arenas more than some musical acts. Yeah. And it is kind of a downtime for stars. Let's be honest. Like Hollywood star Scythe, you and I could play a game right now of we pulled up Hollywood stars and quiz each other and not yeah, know but, who anyone was. But Exactly. And also you got to remember the writer's strike fucked everything up. So yeah, the Project writer's strike is over. Oh, right. But, they got to go make the stuff. Right. The first couple of weeks of SNL back from the writer's strike was comedians. Nate Bargetsy, John Mulaney. Um, there was another one. I forget. Like, so it was like the fourth comic maybe this season. Maybe, yeah. And there may be seasons. And Shane the- Gillis is not doing arenas. But, like, you got you to gotta notice that this guy What is- size room does he do? 
I'm not even sure. He's probably up to theaters. He's probably up to three to five thousands. Hmm. But Mark Norman does that. But right. Mark Norman didn't have that SNL. It is, but it is just a weird. It is just a weird period where like there are so many comedians who, if you're not into the comedy world, you literally they're just no. You don't have any idea who they are. Yeah, but then, but then, they, then you have if you're in TikTok, you know who Matt Rife is. Matt Rife is the biggest comedian in the world. Seven, uh, Eighteen million dollar Live Nation deal, sold out tour, off TikTok mostly. Yeah. So I don't have no problem with Shane, with Matt Rife. I actually know Matt Rife, cool kid. I'd rather see Shane Gillis host SNL than Matt Rife. Anyway, whatever. Um, shout out to the One Up fans that came to Zanies in Chicago. How many do you get? Good, you get more than one, and were they by okay, themselves? Is it thing happening? That's what I'm telling you. There's a guy. I, I'm. I'm really sorry. I'm forgetting all your names because Zanies is such a small club, and they're getting ready for the next show. It's like I don't have time to sit there and like follow you back and talk. Like it's like rushing, rushing, rushing. But these two guys that always came. They came to Rosemont. They came to Zanies last year. They came this year. That guy. He's a Juan Ep like nutcase fan. Um. Then this other guy, suave little, maybe Puerto Rican, maybe Mexican, little suave, one of them, one of them, uh, uh, tweed like a tweed coat, like a, like a a a quarter, three quarter length tweed coat, oh, and okay. slick hair, little chain. I was like, who is this young man? He said, okay. yo, he goes, yo, I've been a fan since years ago. Okay, that's the salute. That's the one up salute. He, he said, yo, it. you think we come alone? I got ten with me. No. Yo, my man. No. My man. Nah. I, don't I got believe 10 you. with me. And it made me realize something. Hey, one up fuck faces. Don't tell your significant others or your friends that you're going to go see some weird Puerto Rican dude from a podcast you like. Just say, hey, let's go check out this dope comedy show. That, that's the way to go. I agree with don't that too. Hide, hide the fact that. I'm on one of your favorite podcasts. Yeah, don't they don't want to. Yo, I'm celebrating me four times this week. Let's go check out a comedy show. That's it. Bam. He goes, yo, he's bragging to me. I got 10 with me. What you going to say? I was like, my man, you go, okay, you won. You won the contest of who brings the most fans. And it's sad that the number is only 10, but you won. Um, Shout out what? to him, bro. That's a different level. Okay, I want to talk lyrics, and I want to talk French Montana. All right, can can I can I do the intro to the lyrics? There's something I want to say, but it relates to your lyrics talk. Okay. Okay. You want to do that now? Yeah. We've mentioned this before, but it bears repeating. I can't take this fucking conversation about Killer Mike anymore, all right? Mm -hmm. And it's not just... Kids on the internet. I even saw a video the other day of Gilly had French on. You see that video moving around? Mm, no. And Gilly was like emotion. You know, you know what Gilly's like when he starts yeah. down. Yeah. Gilly's doing the whole Gilly thing about we got to give awards to people when they're young and in their prime. And like, I love Gilly to death. I like fundamentally disagree with this concept so much that the people that are inherently deserving are the young. Like, I just don't understand this conversation. And listen, truth be told, you know, clips on the, on the internet are, I don't know if the, if the starting point here was the killer Mike combo, but it's what it felt like for me. And I've seen so many people having, it. so I just want to take a moment with Sife right here. We, we had this conversation before, but I want to like tie it up nice. Cause I thought about it. I want to know what people are talking about when they look at the categories this year that Killer Mike won it. And tell me what you're so upset about or who the nominee was that was so missed in these categories. Uh -huh. Best best rap performance. Killer Mike had a song, you have to remember, with Andre 3000. Oh, he's Future. good. Who, Andre, you think? Oh, and Future. And Future. Now, that's very interesting because we all know, I've said this before on the podcast, some people don't know, Future is Dungeon Family. 
Future is exactly. a little cousin of Rico Wade. Future was all up in the studio. Keep going. As a little kid. In what studio? When Outcast, the dungeon. Oh. The dungeon. He was all up in the studio. I mean, yeah, he was a little hustler kid selling drugs on the side, but he was in the studio with Big Boy Andre, um, uh, uh, Big Rube, Goody Mob. So a lot of future, although, yes, he's all trap, you can hear the melodic influence. So, and then, and then, but my point is, Killer Mike also comes from, from a branch the, of that family. Yes, he's also a branch. So here, so just real quick, I'm going to hit the three categories Killer Mike won in, and you tell me where you would be so upset that someone younger didn't win. Best rap performance, Killer Mike won over, let's rule out people, Love Letter by Black Thought. Let's take Black Thought out because he's the same age as Killer Mike, so we don't even need to have the conversation, right? Like, it doesn't matter. The complaint would have been the same if they gave it to, to Black Thought. So let's go to the younger artists. Koi LeRae, players. I love Koi LeRae. I'm glad she's killing it. She is a great popular artist who's making records that are moving. We are not going to act as if best rap performance, the rapping on a minute and 40 seconds or whatever players is of rapping, should have beaten out uh, scientists and engineers by Killer Mike. Agree? Or, or even the Black Thought. Or, oh, so, so let's take out Koi LeRae, players. Great tune, big hit. That it wasn't gonna win. Rich Flex, Drake and Twenty One Savage, 21. love that record. Fun tune, fun tune. A, I don't think it's a better rap record than what Killer Mike, Andre Three Thousand, and then we're doing on Scientists and Engineers. Better club record. Better club record, absolutely. And also, while we're at it, you know, I gotta be honest: is, is Drake a kid's Drake's? Yeah, he, Drake's in his mid to late thirties now. He's not late. even in the little kid combo. Drake is in his late thirties. So then you have the hillbillies, Baby Keem and Kendrick Lamar. Baby Keem is young, cool, but that's in the same kind of category musically as scientists and engineers. You could choose which one you like better. Certainly, nothing worth getting upset about one way or the other. And if if and if other things aren't there that you think should be there, do you know that your artists that you love and you're talking about these young bulls who deserve the chance? Do you know that they submitted to win a Grammy? Does anybody know uh, no, how this that, works? That, yeah, the submission parts. Fuck, like yeah. But you don't know. Yeah, you just I don't get it, know. Like, a lot of young artists aren't per thinking about that, so they don't even submit. Yeah, they think it just it just happens. No, there's a process to get onto the Grammy list. Right, and these artists went for it, and maybe your favorite didn't. So, the best rap song, Scientists and Engineers won again. It beat Doja Cat Attention. Is that what you're screaming about? By the way, Doja's dope to me. I really, I love Doja as a rapper. Which one is Attention? Um, I think Attention. Oh, oh, uh, it, it's, it wasn't big. It was like the first one before Paint the Town Red. It didn't quite blow up. Okay. I loved it. It was very rosenberg -y. It was like... Kind of underground Ian vibe. Okay. Um, good tune. Barbie World. Nikki and Ice Spice. Is that what y'all are screaming about that you think should have won? Just Wanna Rock. Uzi Vert? You mean the song that he doesn't rap on? Is that the <laughs> one? There's not one rap. I, I like Just Wanna Rock. This, this, so that song has no rap. There's no is that like rap. Playing, is that like I'm playing the wrong version? No, there's, there's no not, rap there's not version. A version out there that exists. That I'm like, why do I keep playing this instrumental version? No, this is the song. The instrumental version is the only version. Babe, are there any words in the song you remember? No words. It's fire. It gets you hyped. But well, what's no the what's words. the one thing they say a thing they though? Rah 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 rah. Damn. So, oh, and damn, and body yada. Yeah. Then I love it. I love it. That song. No, the song's amazing. And then again, there's Rich Flex, which again, fun fucking song. It's not the best rap song. So that's the second category Killer Mike has won in that I don't know why people are complaining about. Lastly, best rap album, Michael Killer Mike. Let's take out the Nas King's Disease 3 because guess what? They're the same age. Conversation doesn't matter. So take your, out Your Nas. argument is just that they're saying young? That it should have been, why is it the old guy that's winning? These things should be given to but people when I, they're Mike, young. Killer Mike is old in age, but he's still, like, 
kind of well, I don't know. He's not young and rap. No, I know what you're saying. He had a he came out with his first album, and then there was like a big long gap where like he he popped up on features, but he and wasn't he did a lot. Really... He did he did very like super underground albums, like independent releases out the trunk. No, he did. I definitely interviewed him at my apartment on 86th Street, which would be in like oh eight. Yeah. So like he was definitely putting shit out, but it wasn't really being consumed in a big way. It's not yeah. like people were sick of him, like, oh man, we've been getting killer Mike albums nonstop forever. Yeah. So take out the Nas. Then you have the Drake and 21 album. It was a really fun album, guys. It was a good vibe for a few weeks. I rocked out and had fun. Okay. Um, I did not hear the Metro Boomin album. No disrespect. I didn't hear the album. That was and, that's never gonna win anyway. And that's never gonna win. That's not a that's a producer compilation type joint. Right. It's just so, not likely to win. Yeah, it's not gonna win. And then we know we know Syph has told us many times how much he loves Utopia by Travis Scott. Love it. But from a rapping fiend, standpoint, fiend, fiend, fiend. it's a vibe album, great vibe album. I'm not going to put it in the rap category that Michael by Killer Mike is in. Uh, so I just don't understand why people couldn't. You, you, young is not. We need to get out of this headspace that rap is a young man's sport. Do you know why rap was a young man's sport? Because it was created by young people. They were the only people who had ever made it previously. Yeah, every at the time. At the time. Well, let's we have to stop with this subscribing to the idea that what's dope and cool is only what's young. That's out of here. That's a different era. You were warped to think that way. That's we were wrong. Like, yeah. yo, Saif, um, you know, my 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 um my favorite on my white side, my favorite artist maybe ever, as you would know, is Paul Simon. Yeah. Paul Simon, what's considered to be like his masterpiece. His Graceland, he was in his mid-40s when he dropped that. That was his, oh, my God, he did it. Then he dropped the next one when he was, like, close to 50. Yeah. And then kept rocking until his mid-70s. All of these people, like, all these other genre artists, they kept going. Quincy Jones, Syph Quincy made Michael, made Thriller. He was well into his 50s when he was getting <laughs> his, in his 50s, yeah. So, like, can we just stop? Like it's yeah, great. And then what, like, we respect it all, but don't, don't just like you shouldn't write off young artists, and I think that's whack. You don't do the opposite. Yeah, and also like there's do a young awards, do like a rookie awards or something. Like who's gonna, you know what I mean? It's gonna who go make a fucking young people award. Or it would be cool if they in in the Grammys, if you want to talk Grammys, if they added like a new artist by genre, that would be fun. A best new artist in each genre would be fun. Well, they have best new artists. Overall, there's just best new artists. Yeah, By the way, right. you know who the best new artist was? Who? Victoria Monet. Do you know how long Victoria Monet has been around making music? <laughs> Victoria Monet has been a writer and artist for like a good 10 joints. Yeah. So I just got frustrated when I hear people like, nah. We need to give people while well, they're young but to encourage them. No, nah, they're getting encouraged. You know what's encouraging them? The money that they have available to them and all the different platforms that are available to them. And if they make an album good enough, yo, Kendrick wasn't old when he won his best rap album. Kendrick's pretty young. Like, it's not like young guys never win the awards. So why are we hating? Because Killer Mike won one at 49. Was he 48? 49 years old. 48, I think. Anyways, all right, I'm done. So, no, what did you want to say, Saif, about lyricism? Okay, I saw. Uh, I was, this is a deep I was, question. I was watching um, one of my favorite things to watch, Vlad TV. Oh, what uh, a what nah, a work shit. of art. Nah, but um, Vlad always comes up on my TikTok. So <laughs> Vlad was talking. Yo, to Aries. What's your favorite TV show? What, what TV show are you into these days? Fargo. <laughs> no, no, Vlad TV. Oh, Vlad TV. Yeah, my yeah, favorite yeah, show. I watched. I watched Fargo. Um, <clears throat> so TV. they were talking about Aerie Spears. I'm trying to do my 10,000 steps a day, so I was just walking around Chicago. So I was mm -hmm. just listening. <clears throat> and um, they were talking about, um, he was like, oh. Uh, By the way, I want to stop and encourage you. Good for you to walk, try to get those 10,000 steps. 10, 000, I like it. Okay. Um, so he was like, <clears throat> so he was, he was saying, it was about Drake. Drake's not a lyricist. 
He was like, he's like, I'm not a big Drake fan. He's not a lyricist. And Vlad was arguing with him. And then it got into like, well, remember Black Thought did that freestyle. That's a lyricist to me. You know okay. what I'm saying? And then Vlad was like, what about Lil Wayne? And he's like, I'm not really a big Lil Wayne fan. So like, I think the term lyrics or lyricism is too broad. It like, it, it when you have these hip hop conversations, debates that we always have, what exactly is lyrics and lyricism? Because sometimes it's the performance. Sometimes it's delivery. It's not what you say, but how you say. So what is lyrics or lyricism? It's a great... Because that's a big umbrella. It has to be chopped down, man. Put some fucking x lax in this Coke and chop it down. Woo! <laughs> everyone <laughs> says, though, everyone always says, like, oh, dope lyricist. Yeah. What do you mean by dope lyricist? Does it include the rapping skill, or is it just the lyrics that they're saying? And is it the word use? Yeah. Is it the stories told? Is it just that each word has meaning? I mean, there's, there's, I don't, I don't, and then I know what I like. Like, I love listening to Most Deaf, Black Thought. Um, you know, uh, but then like Shane, people say, Shane Gillis. Shane Gillis. But then like, they say Buster's a lyricist. But are they talking about his delivery style? You know what I mean? Like, did we wait till too long in the show to talk about the fact that Buster Rhymes supposedly got into a fight last night at a club? Uh, the, you know, I was gonna, I, I saw that. What was that about? They, I well, saw the, the fact, but most dragging notably, some the, guy out. Yeah, and, and that when the people write about it, of course, they refer to it as he got into a fight with fellow rapper. And then you're like, wait, who is the rapper he got in a fight with? And the guy's name is Nizzle Man. And you're yeah, like, Nizzle Man. <laughs> Nizzle Man. <laughs> <laughs> I literally, I literally ask people around me. Maybe I'm old. Does anybody what? know who Nizzle Man is? Wait, this happened? Yeah. But when, when you heard about this yesterday while you were out? Yeah, I saw it on on. I was in a bar in Chicago, and it was like when it happened. So it was like I don't know, three in the morning or whatever. And I go, Hey, does anybody know who Nizzle Man is? Because they are dragging this man out of this bus's face. <laughs> Yo, the articles say, fellow rapper. Nizzle man. I went, I don't know if fellow rapper is fair. That's like that's like that's like a kid who ran for student government got into an argument with Obama and it says fellow politician Stevie <laughs> Stevie Johnson. You're like, well, I guess they're We're, both politicians. So so Bust is an interesting one because I feel like Busta kind of does everything. It's like we need to ask who do we ask this question to? What does lyricist truly mean? Because it really is a matter of taste, right? I I get, but then like, because like, I, I'm just using this example with Vlad, like whatever, it just sparked my mind into like, yes, what is, because I could see how you love Black Thought, and if that's your style, how you could not love Lil Wayne, but I can never see how Black Thought wouldn't love Lil Wayne. You know what I mean? Is it the type of music you rap on? Because, bro, I have a Lil Wayne playlist that I put together. And every time I play it, I hear shit I never heard. He raps, like, his his analogies and fucking comparisons and, sh and, and metaphors are sick. So is that lyrics? Because it's over a trap beat? Is it different than because it's not a soul beat? That's you know, a really do we want to put Little Wayne on us on a, the soul? Does the beat make a difference? But I feel <sighs> you know, Little Wayne be saying some fucking shit. But then he also has songs where he's like really not lyric. He says the dumbest not lyrical shit ever. Yeah, like I, you know, I eat that pussy. Like a song called "Eat That, Eat That." What's it about? What's well? Hold on, let's think about it. What is that song about? I'm not sure. He's so deep with the lyrics. <laughs> But yeah, but like, okay, so does that, 
You have to be con a, a quote unquote conscious rapper to be no. a lyricist. No, absolutely not. Because I've heard Quali say Lil Wayne is one of the best rappers ever to do it. Well, then you also have the thing about where the quote unquote lyricists, when you ask them what they listen to, all they tell you they listen to is Gucci Man, and then you're like, "Wait, is Gucci, is Gucci a lyricist?" Yeah. And I don't know, like even Ghostface. Ghostface is a lyricist, but not in the traditional sense. He's a different kind of lyricist. Yeah. So what? So what? What does it mean, yo? Like Ludacris is, like sometimes that yo. I mean, back in the day, man, yo, Ludacris is the lyrics, and I'm like. I don't no, I think didn't... you're saying lyrics. I think you're saying delivery. That's so funny you said. Ludacris is a great one to focus on. Yeah. Because there are people who think Ludacris is one of the nicest. And then I'm like, well, I really like Ludacris, but I do not hear that level that you're saying. I but, I do, but I do hear how he flips the word structure and the rhyme schemes and all that. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. He's... He's very. I love playing ludicrous music, but I never thought like, oh, he got the ill lyrics. You I'll tell know? you one thing though. No, I agree. I'll tell you. And by the way, Jada Kiss is another interesting one. Yeah. Because some people be like Jada Kiss, the absolute nicest, and then the next person will tell you Jada Kiss isn't the best in his own group. Jada Kiss like, never made a, a, a hit album. Yeah, or or that like, yeah, you love Jada Kiss because of his voice and his punchlines, but he's not lyrical miracle. You know what I mean? He has the most charisma, but is he really the lyrical miracle, spherical, clerical, irical miracle? Jada Kiss, I'm, I'm, I already, I've already decided Jada Kiss is going to be my top five forever. Really? Jada Kiss is one of my top fives forever, and he's not even my favorite in the group. I like Sheik more than any of them. By the way, I love Sheik Luch. Saif, Saif, you should change your, on your Twitter bio, yeah. you should add, I think Sheik Luch is the best member of the locks. <laughs> I love, Sheik it's Luch that is, unique a take. Sheik Luch is incredibly underrated. Uh, well, uh, well, first of all, you're saying his name wrong, because I'm reading it. I think his name is pronounced Sheik Louch. <laughs> I did it. You ever saw the video? I put of that. No, you did a video about Sheik Yeah, there was Lauch. this white guy. I guess he reviews hip-hop albums, and he was reviewing uh, The Locks' um, first album, uh, Money, Power, Respect. And he was like, Jada Kiss, Styles P, and Sheik Louch. And I go, how are you reviewing? I'm re writing. How are you reviewing an album? You don't even know the guy's name. Just listen to the album. He says his name. Right, he's going to say it. But then that, I'll, I'll just sidebar, what Jada Kiss did at the verses. I know. I'm like this guy is the great. He fuck. He got the raps. He got the fucking showmanship. He took control of that whole situation. He murdered it. He fucking was funny when he fucking flicked Jewel's his hat. Like I'm like, oh, Jadakus is the greatest. I to know. Ever he, do this. He went up to a different level completely during that. So, but but whatever. So, Jadakus is the type. Yeah, he got so many raps. That he he never would even perform. He wouldn't even remember. If you were like, yo, do that joint with, with this guy, he would be like, I don't know that song. I wrote it. I never performed it. Whatever. So who's the illest lyricist? Because like when the when the oh, I guess Vlad was talking about the beef with the most deaf in the drink situation. Oh, Vlad talked about that? No way. <laughs> so I don't know. Like most deaf. To me, you know, I listen, even I listen to old most deaf and I'll hear somebody, oh shit, I never realized that's what he was saying. That's ill. Is it like poetry? Is lyrics like poetry? Is it Easter eggs? It come, you get it later? I don't know. Yo, this sounds like a Borat conversation. This sounds like a Borat conversation or an Ali G conversation. <laughs> Yo, what is lyrics? <laughs> <laughs> Like, you sit down with Jada Kiss. The first thing you say is, yo, we with Jada Kiss right now. Yo, what is a lyric? <laughs> um, hey, let's say, let's go over to Patreon because you said you want to talk about uh, French Montana. We didn't answer this. We're not. You think we're getting the answer in one day? So we should go live. To, to ask what lyrics are? 
Maybe yeah, we what should... are lyrics? What are what is lyricism and what's a lyricist in hip hop? So maybe we should make this a real like a lot like a planned live one yeah. app YouTube situation. I would love that. All right, maybe we'll do that for next week. What do you think? Sounds good to me. Um, what right. is lyrics? Yo, what is lyrics? Go to patreon.com slash one is life. Do us a favor. Don't sign up for the free uh, thing. You will get nothing. So you're going to want to <laughs> sign up for the pay tiers. No. no Preferably. One, no, there's one. I don't. Billy June, you have to fix it. No disrespect, everybody. I all appreciate right, so let me ask the question, sport. though. What do we, here's the question. We agree that the tier should be 750 right? 750 But then so, Billy June never turned off the $5 one. But there's a ten dollar one too. Never turn that off either. So now, if we turn them both off, no, someone has to a, a producer, someone who ahead. works for the show, has to individually hit these people and be like, "Hey, we're shutting this off. It's ten, a we, miscommunication. Everything right. is seven fifty. Because otherwise, they're just well. Don't get tell cut the ten dollar people that, but tell the five dollar people." That. <laughs> <laughs> not the same thing shut yeah. off the five dollar one hey okay, guys you guys got over on us for a while five dollars thank you so five dollars over no That's listen over. If, if if you're rich out there and you want to give us 10 because you just want to give us an extra 250 a month you're like yo man let those guys live we know the price of taco bell a burrito went up from 99 cents back in the day to like 239 three dollars we're gonna give them an extra patreon is 750 you want to tip us huh great you want my cash app? Use that ten dollar one. Snipe, maybe we should do one of those live things where we do like a character, and when people tip us live, we like mm, ice yo, cream, delicious. Bro, Give us more, bro. The fucking mm. TikTok lives where like someone's talking about like something serious, right? They're like, I can't believe Diddy disrespected these people. Diddy sexually assaulted. Oh, thank you for the flowers. Thank you for the flowers. Thank you. Listen, Diddy is a monster. He's disgusting. Hey, oh, thank you for the flowers, Mary. Mary, thank you for the flower, the gifts. Thank you. That's a thing. That's a thing. Oh my God, bro. It's re Have you seen the late have you seen the people who do the weird things where they're like they t oh, thank you for the ice cream. Mm, 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 delicious. Ah, mm, 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 mm. You ever seen that? <laughs> no, I haven't seen that. You never seen Pinky Doll? No. Oh, so so. By the way, you should have seen it, not me. But someone showed it to me. I'm gonna show it to you on the on the Patreon. Right, Head to over Patreon. to Patreon. Patreon.com/slash One Ep Is Life. And guys, this uh, we're at the end of the month here, so this is that time when we randomly lose 50 people for whatever reason. So we hope we gain 50. We've been going up every month, uh, and we hope you're enjoying what we're doing over here. We'll catch you on the Patreon and go see Sife at Teehees in Des Moines, Iowa. We're going to get that shit popping. White girls with sloppy white asses. Wait, is that a song? No, that's my new goal in life to get find those. <laughs> <laughs> I like the big sloppy ones. <laughs>